Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some heroes that worship their women. I love an utterly devoted man. And that's what all these men are. The first one that I would love to mention is Lizzie Blake's Best Mistake by Maisie Eddings. This is about Lizzie and Rake. So they actually have a one night situation together, if you will. But then Lizzie ends up finding out that she is pregnant. Rake is very adamant about helping Lizzie and this baby's life. He ends up even moving all the way to America from Australia because he was on a business trip in America when they had their night together. Um, but he lives in Australia. So he ends up literally moving from Australia to America in order to make this work with Lizzie and the baby. I just love how caring and patient he is with Lizzie. Like, oh, I love him so much. He really reminded me of Bo from Out in the Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. And y'all know how much I love that book. And I feel like Rake is like another version of him, if that makes sense. I also really love Lizzie as well. She has ADHD and honestly thinks that this is gonna be a very challenging thing for her to do but rake is there for her every step of the way and is willing to do literally anything for it. lizzie he literally moved across the world to be with lizzie like he will do absolutely anything for her flawless by elsie silver is my next one this is a small town cowboy romance our hero in here ret is a bull rider and he's experienced not the best stuff going on in the media um one of his sponsors i think is kind of like the a milk company and he's on tv one day basically saying like I don't really like milk and it kind of bites him in the butt because he has like a sponsor with milk. Um, and so he's not doing the best with the media right now. And so his manager ends up sending his daughter as kind of like a PR babysitter of sorts. Enter Summer, who is said manager's daughter. <laughs> and she is there to basically keep an eye out on Rhett and make sure that he basically stays out of the media for the foreseeable future. She ends up moving in with him for a short time at his family ranch in a small town, ends up seeing him doing all the bull riding and stuff. And I think get a little bit hot and heavy with them living in the same house, okay? <laughs> but these two can't help but fall for each other. And the things that Rhett says to Summer, like, oh my gosh, I was a puddle absolute puddle for the words that this man told summer like oh yes like he knew that summer was gonna be his and he was gonna he was gonna get her no matter what i love i love that type of man yes next to you by hannah bottom young is another one with a worshiping hero matt is absolutely obsessed with lane this is a friends to lovers romance lane in here has been friends with matt for a few years now i want to say and they just like, they've been slowly, secretly pining after the other person, but I've never like admitted their feelings. Um, but then one day Lane ends up buying a used bus online and wants to redo it and make it into like a mobile home of sorts to move into the bus. And Matt actually owns a like mechanic shop. So he's gonna help her redo the bus and make it livable and everything like that. And they spend more time together and go on road trips together and just experience life together more. And they finally reveal their feelings. Matt literally does everything for Lane. Like, like he will do drop everything for her. He stays up all night long, like working on this bus for this woman. <laughs> she doesn't know that he's doing it. She's like, go to bed, go home. And he's like, yeah, sure. But he actually stays there and like works in this bus all night long for many days because he just wants to make Lane happy. Like he wants to make this one's so happy and he does just that. Yearning for Her by Tiffany Roberts is a paranormal one that I absolutely adored and Kian in here will literally crawl on the floor for Willow. Like is absolutely obsessed with her. They end up meeting one night, have a little hooky up situation, okay? He's actually an incubus and so he feeds off the passion of other people. And when he like feeds off of people, he knew, maybe needs to like feed off of passion, like someone's lust, like, like maybe twice a day or once a day, whatever. After the night he's been with Willow, he is like fed for like two weeks. And he's now realized he can't feed off of anybody else. His body won't let him. And he doesn't know how to get in touch with this woman. She like left the morning of, didn't leave her phone number, didn't leave her name. And like, he is just searching the streets for this woman who left him absolutely gobsmacked. And he cannot feed off of anybody else. All he thinks about is her. So it's about him finally finding her and realizing like, I will do anything to keep you like anything at all. Like I know nothing about love, but if it's love you want, teach me. I will learn to love. Like, I don't know how to love, but like teach me what love is because I think I could love you. And oh, I love Kian so much. Like he's going to do anything and everything possible to make Willow his. Next time that time I got drunk and eaten a love potion at a werewolf by Kimberly Lemming. If you want a funny, short, paranormal read 
I really recommend this one. So the heroine here, Brie, she is at a bar one day and ends up getting hit on by this guy and is not into it. She's like, no, sorry, dude, like I'm not into it. He ends up buying her a drink, doesn't know that the drink is actually, has like a love potion in it. And this guy just won't say, like hear her saying no. So she ends up like throwing the drink in his face and ends up like actually hitting the guy behind him who is the hero of the story, who is a werewolf. And the moment he sees Brie, he knows that that's his fated mate. But Brie is like convinced that it's just the love potion that she found out was in the drink. And he's like, nope, like, no, 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 no. I'm a werewolf. I know when I found my mate, you are my mate. We're gonna make this work. He like literally goes and gets them married without her even being there. Cause he can like threaten the people at the like um, courthouse to be like, just have her sign her name here. And like, um, we're gonna be married. Like he literally gets them married without her even being there. He changes their last name on her mailbox. He fully moves in with her without her knowing. <laughs> and she finds it so ridiculous. She goes, what is this man doing? This is just a love potion talking. And he's like trying to convince her like, no, I'm all in with you. You're my fate in May. This is happening. Okay, I absolutely love these two. It's this, the series is hilarious. Kim Blue makes me laugh my butt off. An alien romance that I have is Taken to Braxia by Elizabeth Stevens. This one is a little bit more darker tone. Um, and it's an alien romance. So the heroine of the story, she's a hybrid. So she's part human, part alien species. She ends up living on this moon full of human slaves. Her mother was one of them. Um, and every like five years, an alien species comes who like owns them. And SA is a lot of the women. Her mother ended up being one of those people. Her friends have been essayed. And um, the hero of the story actually is the ruler of this planet Varaxia that the moon is orbiting, I'm pretty sure. And he's realizing like supplies are going to this moon. And he's like, what is going on this moon? Like, what is it? He goes to the moon to figure out what's going on and figures out that like, there's like a bunch of slaves on this moon. And he's like, what is going on? And turns out like some trusted people like betrayed him and has been keeping secrets from him. And he's like not happy about it. But like right when he steps foot on this moon, he knows that his mate is there. And he's absolutely feral, like trying to find her. He goes absolutely feral, but he also is furious that she has been forced to endure what she has on this moon, on this slave moon. Like it is horrible. And he has them try everything possible to make this woman his. She's not having it though. She's experienced quite a lot of horrible things from alien men. And so is her mother and her friends. And so she's like, I'm not coming with you. And he's gonna take her with him no matter what. He's gonna show her like, you're mine, I'm yours. We are destined to be together and I'm gonna do anything for you. And he does just that. They end up going to Braxia where he shows her like, you're my queen and you're gonna be with me forever. <laughs> Another alien romance is I Married a Naga by Regine Abel. Cesaro is our hero in here on the cover. He is a Naga. So he like looks like humanoid on top, but then like at the bottom is like a snake tail, if that makes sense. Anyway, so he lives on this planet and Serena is a human woman who has been taken to the planet to compete in like this hunting game of sorts um, with a um, group of animals that is overpopulating the planet. But then like there's some rules where she cannot cross a certain boundary um, or like she'll be disqualified or she'll be like forced to leave the planet. And like something happens where she's saving somebody's life, like an alien's life and she ends up crossing the boundary she wasn't supposed to. So she's in violation of this alien species like laws. But the hero's like, instead of killing her, I'm gonna have her marry me instead. And yeah, that's all I wanna say. And he like makes a nest for her, a whole home for her, like a cave home. And he like, like there are just so many things that I remember about this book that like, oh, it makes me so happy because of how devoted he was to her and how he's gonna do everything for her. He is full on like devoted to her and wants the best for her and will not accept anything less. <laughs> One by Victoria Aveline that I really enjoyed is Resisting Maxu. This is the sixth, this is the sixth book in the Clickanian series. You don't read it, need to read the series in order, honestly, um, but I recommend it because I really enjoy reading these books. <laughs> Meg is our human woman in this story and she, like many of the other women on in this series, um, were illegally taken from Earth. She's like thriving on Clickania. She really loves this new planet. And she is absolutely shocked when Maxu shows up, who's an alien on Clickania claiming Meg 
claiming that Meg is his, like they're fated mates. She's not happy about this. She like wants to live a very independent life. She did not live the best life on earth. She was under the thumb of a man for quite a long time on earth. And she's like, this is finally my chance to live an independent life. And so she's not very happy. Like the first couple months of her living there, this guy shows up and says that they're fated mates. She's like, I just wanted to be alone. <laughs> but then Maxie's gonna like show her in every way possible. Like I want what's best for you and I'm here for you every step of the way and whatever you want to do but you are mine like you're mine like you're coming home with me now <laughs> another alien one is wed to the alien warlord by January Bell so our heroine of this story is one of the many human women who have been sent to the alien planet that the hero is a part of um they were sent by their human government um to basically sign a peace treaty with them and it's a group of all women and they're very excited they're like this is our first mission we're very excited about this little do they know that their human government actually betrayed them and is actually offering the women up as peace offerings to these aliens as wives <laughs> and so they show up to this ceremony that the aliens are putting on thinking that it's like a friendship ceremony or like they're going to be signing some peace treaty or whatever but actually each of the human women get married to aliens on the planet not knowing because there's a language barrier so the heroine of the story ends up getting married to the Indian warlord there um, and she doesn't know that she's married to him um, and the wedding ends up getting like hijacked by some like not great people and everyone has to like run off into the woods to save themselves and the hero like takes care of his woman right then she finally realizes like wait a minute did you just call me a wife like what is going on <laughs> um and it's kind of like a survival romance in this jungle with a language barrier in between the two of them but he's gonna protect her with every fiber of his being and oh i love that i love that he was like doing everything and everything to make her comfortable and like getting to know her more and i really enjoyed this alien romance i definitely want to read more in the series i've only read this first one and the last one that i have is when she's weary by ruby dixon so this is a short little novella our heroine in here has experienced quite a lot of trauma in her life when it comes to alien men she was a slave and so she doesn't really like alien men she keeps to her own home on this refugee planet for human women and um, there's some aliens that live on the planet however so our hero in here actually lives on the planet he goes and knocks on her door for a specific reason and um the first time they meet like she basically tases him <laughs> she does not want anyone on her property especially an alien man she's like no 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 no, no not happening he's gonna try everything to make her comfortable with him being close to her he literally will stand at the end of the sidewalk and she'll stand on her doorstep to talk to her because like that's how she's comfortable is that he's so far away from her at like when they're first getting to know each other you know because he's like in it for the long haul he knows that this woman is going to be his like, he knows that she is destined to be his and he's going to do anything and everything to make that happen it doesn't really matter if it happens at a slow pace he is a very patient man and he is there to show her that. Anyways, so you have it. Those are 10 romances with worshiping heroes. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations, I would love to know. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a pink heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.